and this gentleman, none other than the great Mike Silver, every single Thursday right here on Willard and Dibs. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good, man. Just another slow news week for the 49ers. Ain't that the truth, man. Hey, before we dive too deep into Niners, not a slow news day for the entire NFL either. Um, just sort of reading the stuff that's now coming in about the House Oversight Committee's findings about the commanders and the NFL as a whole. I, I Like, I, I think we know where this is going with Dan Snyder. Where is this going with Roger Goodell? You know, I, I got to dig into it a little bit, but, uh, you know, I never uh, underestimate the NFL's ability for shadiness. And, uh, you know, Dan Snyder seems to be on the path to selling, which would be great for that storied franchise and great for Ron Rivera, who, under a lot of duress, has done really, really good work and once again has the commanders back in the playoff picture. And, you know, look, this is, uh, uh, you know, I think if you started seeing uh, independent oversight or congressional oversight of a lot of things the NFL does, uh, there'd be a lot of eyebrows raised. And I wonder where this goes once uh, some of these emails get released, if other owners aren't impugned and uh, part of the collateral damage through all this. But back to the Niners, Brock Purdy and an amazing performance coming off the bench as Jimmy Garoppolo breaks his foot. Were you surprised at just how galvanized the locker room was behind uh, Mr. Irrelevant? No, um, and that's that's the nickname we could say on the radio, by the way. But, right. um, <laughs> you know, I had heard a lot of things about Brock Purdy over the summer and uh, into the season um, relating to how confident he is. And that that goes a long way. And then when you can back it up under duress, which, let's be honest, he was. He came in early. Um, he was facing, you know, cover zero blitzes a lot of the day. They were coming after him. He hung tough. He delivered the ball. Um, you know, he, he had some swag to him. He put the ball in tight windows. So I think that goes a long way now. I, uh, you know, it's not necessarily going to look like that the rest of the way. Uh, and I, I think people who are taking, you know, that promising debut and extrapolating and saying, hey, he's better than Jimmy. And this is not good news. The 49ers were a legitimate Super Bowl threat the way Jimmy Garoppolo was playing with that loaded team. They are less of a threat to go to and win the Super Bowl now on paper. Um, you know, Brock Purdy's got some good things about him. He's not perfect. Uh, and he's young and he's going to have some moments that make you, uh, you know, as a 49er fan, want to slam your hand against your head or with the nearest object. So, um, you know, they have a very, very good team. They like him. They like his vibe. But this just got a lot tougher. Yeah, I, I wonder, with what you just said there, has this tilted too far in the other direction based on teammates are saying good things, he's very confident, we saw a small sample, and it looked pretty good. Uh, have our expectations gone too far uh, for, for Brock Purdy? Yes, uh, and that's not, you know, over the long haul, maybe not. You just don't know, you know, until a guy plays, but it's uh, yes, and look, the mood swings have been amazing. I, I took <laughs> that job at the Chronicle in August. Let's think about the mood swings since then. Jimmy's on a side field. He's gone. Trey or bust. I don't know if Trey can do it. Oh, my God. Trey didn't look good in the opener. Trey's out for the year. But Jimmy looked amazing against Seattle. We're good. Oh, Jimmy looked awful against Denver. This is why we hate him. Oh, wait, Jimmy's good again. You know, it's been one mood swing after another. So I'm trying to look at it more dispassionately, but Jimmy Garoppolo absolutely gave the 49ers a better chance to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl in 2022 than Brock Purdy, but it did look good, and I'm hoping for them it continues to look good. Yeah, we all are, and uh, all those mood swings, Mike, has basically been our shows uh, each and every Monday yeah. over the past 12 <laughs> weeks, and thank God for the uh, for the mood swings. 
How does Kyle Shanahan change the way he goes about game planning for Tampa Bay, knowing that now that Tampa has tape on Brock Purdy, they're going to try to gear up to, to take certain things away from him? Well, yeah, if you want to see more mood swings, go to my Chronicle archives for sure, because <laughs> I get caught up in it too. But, yeah, um, you know, Kyle Shanahan's approach to game planning is very, um, you know, pronounced. He Every week he deconstructs. He goes after the opponent um, specifically. He doesn't just, you know, kind of tweak what he's already got. He if every week's a new movie, and he's, you know, constructing a script and all that. So, uh, you know, in that sense, he's just doing that, you know. And, and he did say yesterday that it's less of a an adjustment schematically from Jimmy to Purdy because they're both pocket passers uh, than it was from Trey to Jimmy. So, uh, you know, I think you just try to come up with plays that will work against the Buccaneers, formations that will isolate their tendencies. Easy for me to say. But Kyle, I think, is the best in the world at that. And you do it, and you see what he, you know, you see if he can run it. He could uh, last week, and uh, now the Bucks have seen the film on him. They'll do some things. And Todd Bowles is a very, very aggressive coach. So I think you'll see more of a, all right, let's see if this kid can hang in under pressure until he just continually proves that that's a bad way to go. Whereas Tom Brady, we've, we've got a 23 year body of work, um, on him against blitzes and pressure and it seems kind of slanted in one direction i'm not saying that we have a final verdict yet but i strongly believe that one you know one thing has shown to be true over the other yeah absolutely mike silver with us here 95 7 the game every thursday on willard and dibs okay especially with him coming into town this weekend mike he's going to be 46 years old next year he already retired once his team has scored over 20 points twice all year long, yet here we go again with rumors, maybe Tom Brady to the 49ers next year. Why won't this go away? I don't, I'm just trying to enjoy this year. And listen, I, I thought what Tom Brady did against the Rams in the playoffs last year was one of the greatest things he's ever done. Yep. I likened it to Joe Montana in the 83 NFC Championship game, which they lost because of two terrible calls, by the way, for you Niner fans who understand. But, um, yeah, I thought coming back from a 27-3 deficit in that playoff game was one of the greatest things I've ever seen him do, and I've seen it all. You know, I covered pretty much, you know, one of his first games and many of them since. So I was like, cool, like George Costanza and on a high note, you're good. I know you didn't win, but like, that's amazing. And by the way, he's doing stuff in his forties that you're not supposed to be able to do in your late thirties. Um, then he came back and it looked like, Oh God, for my purposes, I wish he hadn't come back. I get why he did, but like, He's going through stuff in his personal life, obviously, that makes it really hard. They don't look right. It hasn't looked right. But you know what? Those last three minutes, Monday night, brought it all back for me. I was like, I'm glad he's back. This is awesome. He's done a lot of incredible things. I know. I know it's just a Monday night game against the Saints. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen him do. They were done. They had nothing. They had no juice. And he scored 14 points in three minutes including a touchdown pass with three seconds to go. And I had a little communication with him afterwards. And I'm just telling you, this guy is 45. He's like, now he reacted like a Brock Purdy aged person would react to that moment. So I'm into it. I think it's cool. I'm stoked. I get to see him play live on Sunday. And if it turns out he plays anywhere next year, Amazing if it's in if it's in Levi's, unbelievable. But I'm just trying to live in the moment with him. Everything has been, you know, a bonus. And just appreciating the fact that he's still doing it at his age, and they likely are going to have a home playoff game in January if things continue to trend that way. The Rams won't be hosting a playoff game. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, Mike <laughs> Baker Mayfield. What do you think about that fit in LA as he gets to go uh, here on the Thursday night game? 
you sound like me doing my routine about Cal basketball. I'm like, you know, if they get hot at the right time, win the Pac-12 tournament, get a favorable 215 seed, you never know. That Final Four berth is still on the table. So, yeah, the Rams, you know, hey, they might have a tough path, but it's still there. Yeah, I, you know, I, it'd be interesting to see Baker Mayfield. I don't know this necessarily great for Baker if he were to play three days after showing up. But this is different than Christian McCaffrey. This is the quarterback. So I don't know if tonight is the best scenario for him. But, you know, give the Rams credit uh, for programming. They're on all these primetime games that no one's going to want to watch. So now at least we have a spectacle um, if Baker plays. But, you know, it's exciting for the Raiders that they – were in such a dark place and are now uh, on the verge of being six and seven and theoretically back in the mix, possibly Waller and Renfro come back. So, you know, it's cool that Josh McDaniels and first year general manager Dave Ziegler are now, uh, you know, instead of fans putting uh, a certain expletive in between their first and last name when they talk about them, you know, they've bought themselves a little goodwill. It's exciting to see where that goes. The Rams are dead. The Cardinals are dead. The Seahawks uh, are still hanging around. And, you know, in a week, we'll see the Niners go up there. And that's going to be really cool, too. But uh, Niner fans who, you know, just had a hard time with the Super Bowl last year after the you know, NFC Championship game defeat, uh, you can exhale now. That Rams situation is no more. That is over, yes. All right, well, Mike, great stuff. You you say you've seen it all, but you've never seen Mr. Irrelevant go head-to-head against the GOAT. That's never happened before. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, enjoy <laughs> yeah, this weekend. I, I, you know, that has never happened before, but I have seen the 199th pick of the draft just place the first the first pick of the draft. Yep, that's so right. remember, before he was Tom Brady, he was the sixth round, fourth trigger. Don't forget. He was almost Brock Purdy. Yeah, that's that's what's actually fascinating about this uh, this particular matchup. Mike, thanks, bud. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks so much. Great talking to you guys. Yeah.